In today's video, we will be looking at the Kinahan Cartel, a widely known and infamous global criminal empire specializing in everything, from hitman for hire to smuggling drugs, and of course, let's not forget the gun business as well. The not-so-humble beginning. Kinahan Cartel is relatively new in the crime game. It was founded in the 1990s in Dublin by Christy Dapper Don Kinahan, a small local crook who wanted to make more money by dealing drugs. Soon enough, he pulled his sons Daniel and Christopher Jr. into the game, and their local drug business rapidly grew into an empire that is now worth more than $1 billion. They are everywhere in the world, with the main bases of operation being South America, Ireland, the UK, Spain, and the United Arab Emirates. Christy wasn't born into a poor family and was forced to lead a life of crime in order to survive. He was raised by a decently well-off family and actually went to the best schools and got good grades. He just chose to put his knowledge elsewhere. Dapper Don started his crime career in the 70s on the streets of Dublin. It was mostly small stuff such as burglary, forgery, theft, etc. Before expanding into the Kinahan cartel, he tried to run a dealing ring in Dublin, but was caught and imprisoned. He spent his time behind bars smartly. He learned Spanish and Dutch, and those skills helped him to expand his empire upon release. During the last 30 years, the Kinahan cartel have colluded with Estonian hitman The Butcher, a gun smuggling expert appropriately known as Mr. Nobody. And they employed scare techniques and ordered hits with the help of an enforcer called Hatchet because of his grueling torture tactics. About the Empire Police in Ireland have been searching for the Callahan family for years, but without success. Even though Christie was well known as a small town crook, he managed to rapidly expand his net and ensure that adequate measures for police protection are in place before starting any big action. All the cogs had to be oiled properly, and corrupted officials never say no to free money. Besides some small encounters with the law and spending some time in prison in Belgium and the Netherlands, Christie was never caught and accused as the leader of the Kinahan cartel. While Dapper Don was handling administration and logistics, his son Daniel was in charge of running daily operations with his brother. They quickly learned how to smuggle drugs and weapons, and how to launder that money. I guess it runs in the family. Cartels in South America welcome foreign exporters. They started with mostly heroin and cocaine that they somehow smuggled, either through Spanish or Irish ports, and later distributed the goods across the UK and Europe. If you follow the boxing scene, you have probably heard about Daniel Callahan elsewhere. He is known as a good boxing promoter and representative. At one point, he even worked with the world champ Tyson Fury. Daniel was a key piece in organizing the world title bout between Fury and Joshua. Danny always denied being involved in crime and pushed the promoting business as proof, while his brother, Christy Jr., somehow flew under the radar as a smaller fish and mostly the accountant for his brother. They broke the Europe barrier and pushed their business into Middle Eastern countries. The beginning of the end. Everything was perfect until 2015, when their empire started to slowly fall apart. It all started when a member of the rival Hutch gang, Gary Hutch, the nephew of the leader Jerry, was killed in his Spanish mansion. Gary was working with Daniel Kinahan, and they wanted to get into the exotic animal smuggling business. I mean, you have to own a tiger if you want to become a big cocaine smuggler. But they took it to the other side. They took the animals hostage and used them as leverage so the targets would commit crimes on their behalf. There were rumors, later proven false, that Gary was snitching to the Spanish authorities, and those rumors might have been his downfall. Hitman James Quinn killed Gary and admitted to committing the crime. He didn't say who hired him, though, but it was obvious. Quinn's hit started a bloody gang feud that grew into a brutal war that has since become known as the Hutch Kinahan feud. Over the course of three years, more than 18 people were killed, even some innocents, most of them gunned down in broad daylight. And because there were a lot more Kinahans than the Hutch, the Hutch gang ceased to exist. The peak of the feud was in 2016, when Daniel Kinahan survived an assassination attempt on the knife's edge, but a high-ranked member of the Kinahans, David Byrne, died. That projected badly into the founding table, where his brother Liam was very important, and it became personal for everyone. Daniel was promoting a boxing match, and after the weigh-ins, chaos occurred. A huge gun battle started in the lobby of the Regency Hotel in Dublin. Hutch gang raided the lobby with a car positioned outside so nobody could escape. Three people carrying AK-47s disguised as riot police entered the hotel. Hundreds of bullets were fired, 
but Daniel somehow managed to escape. He later said that he saw them pulling out the Kalishnikovs and that he barely slipped away. Catch me if you can. The constant shooting was of course received badly by the public, and the authorities had to buckle up and increase the effort and funding in order to catch the gangs. National Crime Agency from the UK, the Agency for Law Enforcement Cooperation of the EU, and the US State Department were promptly involved. It is weird that the US helped in European action, but it is likely due to the ties in South America. When the big boys arrived, it was only a matter of time before the pawns will start falling and opening the way to hunt the king. During the first action, Thomas Cavanaugh and his associates, Daniel Canning and Gary Vickery, were caught and imprisoned on guns, drugs, and money laundering charges. Cavanaugh smuggled $40 million in cocaine and other drugs, and during the raid, a lot of dirty cash and unmarked weapons were found in his possession. Kavanaugh was sentenced to 21 years behind bars. Without him, the UK branch was done. After the successful first action, the US State Department offered a bounty of $5 million for information on Christie Sr., Daniel, or Christie Jr., and that is $5 million for each one. That made a lot of people sing, and seven other cartel members from Dubai were caught. But there was no sight of the dapper Don and his sons. But the bagman, Johnny Cash Morrissey, was arrested in Spain soon afterward. He was the main piece in laundering over $30,000 every day. His wife, Nicola, a CEO of a vodka firm in Scotland, was linked to organized crime and arrested as well. The path that led to Cash started when over 200 kilograms of cocaine and half a million dollars were found hidden in cars and SUVs. After capturing them, they raided all the offices and apartments they thought were linked to the couple. Another associate was arrested, and their logistics partner from the UK. That vastly lowered the funding they had, and the trio couldn't keep running forever without money. Johnny didn't move cash by hand. He rather led the operation of spreading the money using the good old Hawala system. It is an underground banking system made to transfer money without the money actually moving. Hawala networks were known to be used in ancient times, and they had thousands of years to develop. Anonymous transactions, no electronic trace, no banks involved. The only physical evidence are the books, and those can't be tracked easily. Each broker uses a personal code, and there are no receipts. The whole system is based on trust. Instead of a receipt, some use a personal token. It can be an old coin, a torn paper, a gold-painted nail, basically anything. My Big Fat Dubai Wedding Irish weddings are known as loud, populated, and fun. So when Daniel was about to get married, he didn't let the whole world chasing him stand in his way. Kinahan invited all of his friends and business associates to his wedding in Dubai. And when the DEA agents got the guest list, they couldn't believe their luck. A free pass to catch all the criminals they knew and all they didn't know that the Kinahan cartel was associated with. The criminals did use the Sky app for encrypted conversations, but it was broken by the authorities. The big criminals couldn't resist showing up to the wedding and comparing their criminal power. It was an elite super cartel wedding party at the Burj Al Arab. There were huge names on the list. Rafael Imperial from the Neapolitan Camorra, Edin Tito Gacchanin from Sarajevo, Ridvan Taji from South America, and the Chilean Ricardo Elrico Riquelmi Vega were only some of the whales attending. Of course, the police didn't break into the wedding. They slowly shrunk the circle and began catching bosses one by one. The operation lasted two years, and with an agreement with the UAE, almost everyone was caught, with 49 dons behind bars. Funnily enough, the only person on the loose is Daniel Kinahan, and there is yet another $5 million reward for him. Well, that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like and subscribe to our channel. Also, ring that bell so you don't miss any of our future uploads. Till next time.